Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Docker and Kubernetes video series by K21 Academy. This video is all about the deployment in Kubernetes and a hands-on of a simple pod deployment. Let us first understand what a pod actually is. Pods are the smallest, most basic deployable objects in Kubernetes. Know everything about the pods by clicking on the link above. Although pods are the basic unit of computation in Kubernetes, they are not directly launched on a cluster. Instead, pods are usually managed by one more layer of abstraction called the deployment. A developer prepares the manifest file where all the specification of a pod is written. A deployer reads this manifest and runs a kubectl apply command. If the manifest is deployable, Kubernetes responds to the deployer and gets the application up and running. A deployment's primary job is to declare how many replicas of a pod should be running at a time. When a deployment is added to the cluster, it will automatically spin up the requested number of pods and then monitor them. If a pod dies, the deployment will automatically recreate it. Using a deployment, you don't have to deal with pods manually. You can just declare the desired state of a system and it will be managed for you automatically. Also guys. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. In this session, we will discuss about Kubernetes deployment in detail and also about how to deploy a container onto a Kubernetes cluster. We will also discuss how to expose the pod within the cluster. And then we will move on to how to expose the pod outside the cluster. At the end, we will also show you how to delete the resources created for the demo. We have taken this clip from our intensive of Docker and certified Kubernetes administrator for beginners, that is CKA. Out of 17 plus modules, this video is a part of our fifth module, which is about Kubernetes networking and deployment. Now, let us listen to our certified Docker and Kubernetes expert. Hi, and welcome to this video. In this video, let's see how do we spin up a pod and Let's see how do we create a service for internal connectivity across applications in the cluster and how to expose our service outside the cluster as well. So let me quickly take you um, to this documentation, the lab documentation guide. And here we have provided a GitHub link, which is a public GitHub link from wherein you can download the YAML files. So I'll just do a git clone command execution and it downloads a complete folder called as Kubernetes. You can check the folder over here. It has these many files and we are interested in demopod.yaml file. We are doing the first exercise over here. We are planning to run a simple application in a pod, which is Nginx application. And then we would be going ahead and uh, exposing our service create a service and expose that outside the cluster or within the cluster. So let's quickly run through our pod YAML file. The version of kind pod is version one. It is kind pod, which I'm planning to create the metadata. It has a name associated with it and the label also have given the same uh, key and the value. In the specification section, it specifies the container. The name of the container is hemo, demo hyphen container and it comes up with image of Nginx. So this is my pod definition file. I'll just uh, go ahead and spin a resource from this file. So what we would do, we would uh, see whether our context is set by just doing kubectl get notes and our notes are in ready state. Let me go ahead and create resource using this file. So we are creating resource. So you can give create hyphen F and you can give demo pod.yaml and enter. So let's check if I do get pods, it should list me that the container is creating and you can do a watch on this command with hyphen W. Whenever there was a change in the output, it would display. So here the container was in creating state. Now the container is up and running. I can press control C and come back to my prompt. And if you go ahead and check the container is up and running. If things goes fine, the container is up and running here. 
if you see this is the pod and it has the container of nginx inside that which is up and running uh, let's see where exactly on which node did it get placed we are not working anything with respect to scheduling algorithm at this point in time but we would be interested to know where exactly a pod got placed in which node so it is placed in worker node one and this is my pods ip address at this point in time so if i refer through this documentation i have showed you these set of commands and now let me expose my uh, demo pod uh, and let me uh, have that accessible only within the cluster okay so what i'll do i'll do a kubectl expose and i want to expose my pod so i'll give pod i want to expose my pod which pod that name has to be given and i would be exposing that so uh, there should be a port number on which container if the service is listening so i would specify that with hyphen hyphen port 80 and nginx container is listening on port number 80 inside the container so target port for my service would be the port number on which container is listening so container is listening on port number 80 so service will also send the packets to target port number 80 and then you can specify the type as cluster ip uh, the keyword is capital c and the capital i and p that has to be retained that way and just press enter it says that the service demo hyphen pod is exposed it has created a service for us let me clear the screen and show you we can do a get svc to list the service this is the default service which is there already present for the communication on the cluster level this is the one which has got created and this is the cluster ip of the service using which you can reach this application so you, if you curl on this particular ip address because i'm on the master node and if i do a curl from the master still then i should be able to reach because this ip address is a cluster level ip address and i've exposed this application across the cluster master is also a part of the cluster so from master node as well i'm able to curl on this ip address so let me quickly show that i was mentioning about the endpoint list maintaining uh, maintenance done by the service and all how do we uh, see that so i can describe any type of object i can i create i can describe a pod i can describe a service i can uh, describe any type of object so let me first describe the service so here if you see it has got created in default namespace the name has been directly taken from the pods name what i was trying to expose the label has been chosen from there i don't have any annotations selector is being taken because i exposed intentionally exposed a pod so it has taken the label of the pod as the selector type is cluster ip the ip address of the service the port number on which the service is listening target port is 80 and endpoint list if you see this is the ip address of the pod with the port number of the container and with this you understand that if endpoint is listed service is able to find the pod it is able to connect to it and it is able to route the request to the pod as well because we are able to open the web page and see this welcome from nginx that has been seen from inside the container right so we are able to reach that particular application using service ip address so here where it says curl into service ip service cluster ip address this is the ip address which we have got allocated at this point in time that ip address has to be replaced over here now i want to edit that particular service because in, initially i thought i'll just expose it within the cluster now i want to expose it outside the cluster so let's see how do we modify that so kubectl we saw get get um, action we saw describe action this is now the third action which is kubectl edit i want to edit service and name of the service is demo hyphen pod so let me give that and i'll look for a string called as type over here because i'm looking for changing this cluster ip type to 
notepot so i'm deleting this word and i would write notepot and i would save this file i'll press escape colon wq exclamation i'm saving that file it says that the service is edited let's list the service get the service and see if you see last time we didn't had this particular port number this is the port number on the host which got allocated this is the node port and because we understood that there would be a mesh type of networking in all the nodes this port number gets opened up and whichever node i reach it will route me to the correct ip uh, correct service ip so let's pick this port number and let's pick the ip address of our uh, one of the nodes and check whether i'm able to reach that application so let me quickly pick my ip address of my worker node 1 and 30811 is the port number so i'll give a colon and the port number and let's see whether we are able to see welcome to nginx so here we haven't opened this particular port number so it would not be listing so what we would do we would quickly go ahead and we will change this networking part in all the nodes so we will add an inbound rule of star in all the nodes quickly and add that particular rule so on the worker node one it is added on master node let me add as well i'm just opening all the port numbers making it as a star and say add and on worker node 2 also let me do that i'm just opening all the port numbers so that in the exercise if i'm trying to access any port number each time i do not have to come and modify that so i've added that and let me quickly refresh the page and see whether i'm able to reach the uh, curl on this so let me quickly curl from here as well so this was my IP address of the worker node. Let me quickly pick worker node's IP address with the port number. Yeah, it's working over here. Let me refresh this and it works here as well on the web page. So uh, the port number was not open. So what did I do? I went to all the three machines and I've added the inbound rule we had done this in the docker class as well so i've added an inbound rule to allow all the type of uh, packets on all put numbers right so because of that i'm able to reach this this has been served from inside my container the demo hyphen pod is actually serving that nginx application inside the container so if we learned how to edit a service we learned how to describe a service and if this service has to be described you would see there is a difference over here let me quickly describe the service and so show you you will find a node port port number and the type is also edited now to node port type so we saw how to create from a yaml file we saw how to describe a service we even understood how to expose a pod from the command line and create a service automatically and then we learned how to edit a running resource or running object service was up and created already present in the cluster we went ahead and we have edited that service and we are able to reach the web page using the node port port number and uh, we would go ahead and delete this resource make a habit that end of every exercise you go ahead and delete it so that it doesn't get piled up a lot of resources in the cluster so we will go ahead and delete the stuffs which we are creating in this particular exercise in case we have to retain that then it would be mentioned in the lab guide as well so we had created two things we had created a pod we had created a service and we have got ahead and deleted that hope that was knowledgeable our docker and certified kubernetes administrator course covers each and every topic that one should know to not only ace the ck exam but also have an in-depth knowledge of docker and kubernetes with hands-on experience since Docker is an integral part of any Kubernetes training, our course starts from the very basic topics like microservices and Docker, Docker networking and storage.
Then we jump on to the basics of Kubernetes like Kubernetes architecture and installation, security and troubleshooting and high availability networking to come up with. Then we come to the deployment stack and advanced networking. In the penultimate week, we cover all the required things to take up the exam with a hands-on project and a couple of practice tests. We will also have door clearing sessions in between. We also have a well-experienced team who are proficient in CV preparation. They help you to prepare a CV that stands out. By the end of the course, you will not only be exam ready. As of this date, we have 100% success rate and we can't wait you to be a part of it too. Are you overwhelmed? Don't be yet. Because our course has 17 plus modules, 70 plus lessons, 33 plus hands-on labs and we also provide you exam preparation tips and resources and a separate team to help you with the doubts and preparation. And the best part is we also provide you with one year free on-job support. If you are interested in taking up the course, I highly recommend you to attend our free class on Docker and Kubernetes for beginners which covers why learn Docker and Kubernetes under Docker, you will learn what exactly are containers and Docker and also Docker architecture. Under Kubernetes, you will be learning what is Kubernetes, why to use it, Kubernetes architecture and pods, highly available and scalable applications and many other topics with a demo of web server deployment. If you are fascinated to attend this free class, register yourself at k21academy.com forward slash Kubernetes 02. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Thank you.